the bsc has provided a platform for all those people who want to raise finance through the stock exchange whoever has to just trade in the stock exchange he should be a registered broker or a sub broker so everybody cannot act as a broker in the stock exchange to advise sebi on matters relating to regulation of intermediaries for ensuring investors protection in the primary market Hello everyone I am Purnima faculty in the department of commerce Vidya Ashram Pri University College Temple of Excellence in this session on financial market I will be having a discussion on the BSC which is known as the Bombay Stock Exchange and also I will be discussing about the SEBI now what is SEBI SEBI is Securities Exchange Board of India why it was established what is the role and purpose of sebi and what are the various functions of sebi and also we'll be having a discussion on the organization structure of sebi now let us look into what do you mean by bsce now bse it is also called as the bombay stock exchange now bsc limited formerly called as the bombay stock exchange limited in 1875 there was the native share stock brokers association which was formed in bombay now this association of share and stock brokers it had its own rules and regulations even before the sebi came into existence now this native share and stock brokers became recognized as the bombay stock exchange limited and it has been carrying out its activities ever since then now let us look into the what this bsc has contributed so it has contributed to the growth of the corporate sector by providing a platform for raising the capital now the bsc has provided a platform for all those people who want to raise finance through the stock exchange now let us look into what are the objectives of setting up the bsc the first objective of setting up the bsc is to provide an efficient and transparent market for trading in equity debt instruments derivatives and mutual funds now the bsc was set up to provide an efficient and transparent market for trading in equity that means anybody who wants to purchase equity shares etc they can also always do so through the bombay stock exchange the debt instruments and also the derivatives and mutual funds then the second objective was to provide a, tra a trading platform for equities of small and medium enterprises now we can uh, see understand that this stock exchange was there only for very large corporations now because of this bsc even small and medium enterprises can go in for a public offer so they can go in for a public issue by listing their shares through the bombay stock exchange then the next objective of having the bombay stock exchange was to ensure active trading and safeguard market integrity through an electronically driven exchange now there this has facilitated active trading nowadays we can all trade with the help of our mobile also so every day we see lakhs of people who will be trading in the stock exchange so every morning they just log in and purchase the shares and by evening they will be able to make a neat new neat profit or they may be having a losses also so depending on the trading activity going on in the stock exchange so this has been facilitated by the bombay stock exchange limited then it also provides other services to capital market participants like risk management clearing settlement market data and education now in addition to providing a trading platform it uh, offers other services now what are the other services it is doing risk management so uh, what are the various risk the business faces and how to manage the risk so this will be done with the help of the bombay stock exchange 
then clearing settlements so any major um, transactions which need settlement it can be done with the help of the bsc and also market data so it also helps in collection of the market data which is necessary so what is the right time for issue of shares and how the shares are to be issued and when is the right time to issue how and also it will be given education to the investors so when is the right what kind of shares we have to invest so all these things education relating to trading will be given by the bombay stock exchange then to conform to international standards now this bombay stock exchange was done to conform to the international standards of the trading system now let us look into let us have more information on the bsc it has established a capital market institute called the bsc limited which provides education on financial markets and vocational training to number of people seeking employment with the stock brokers so in addition to providing all these services it has set up an institute called as the bsc limited so what does this institute teach us so it provides education on financial markets and gives vocational training so if you want to just take up a job under a stock broker then this bsc C limited will be giving training to such people so who can be employed with any of the stock brokers so it is just helping us in trading of the trading activity of the organization then the next important organization which we have to look is the securities exchange board of india now this securities and exchange board of india was establishment uh, was established by the indian government on 12th april 1988 as an interim administrative body to promote orderly and healthy growth of securities market and for investor protection now this sebi or the securities exchange board of india it was established in the year 1988 as an interim administrative body so as then when the trading kept on expanding there were lots of investors who wanted to invest in all these uh, stocks and shares as a result of which the government was forced to introduce a authority who could look into the affairs of the stock exchange so it was forced to constitute this sebi that is the securities exchange board of india to see that there is healthy growth of securities and as and when the uh, investors kept on growing there were large scale malpractices which were engaged in and many of the investors had to lose their money because of such fraudulent practices which was there in almost all the stock exchange uh, stock exchanges then the investors were duped of their hard earned money and there was no regulation on the part of the government to curb all these practices and as a result of which the government was prompted to start a regulatory body who could look into the affairs of the stock exchanges of in india and as a result of which we got this securities exchange board of india so it wanted to promote healthy growth of securities market and also it has regulations wherein the investors are protected then let us look into the reasons why this sebi was started so expanding investors population market capitalization led to a variety of mal practices on the part of companies brokers merchant bankers investment consultants and other in involved in the securities market now because of this easy money which was there in the stock exchanges people became attracted to the stock exchange and they began to invest in the stock exchange but then it gave rise to lot of mal practices on the part of companies so the companies who were engaged in the stock exchange they began to resort to certain mal practices and also there were brokers and merchant bankers investment consultants so they were all there 
and they were duping the investors of their hard earned money then this malpractices included existence of self styled merchant bankers unofficial private placements rigging of prices unofficial premium on new issues non adherence of provisions of companies act violations of rules and regulations of stock exchange listing requirements delay in delivery of shares etc now if you can see here there is a list of all the malpractices which were there now first one is the self styled merchant bankers so self this the merchant bankers they had their own ways of operating and there was nobody to curb them then we had also unofficial private placements now the companies used to just demark some of the shares to some other company and they used to just sell the shares in in this manner which was very unethical then next rigging of prices so artificial rigging they used to create artificial scarcity in the stock market to see that the uh, company the share prices of such companies would go higher and higher so this rigging of prices was unethical then unofficial premium on new issues now whenever there is a new issue coming into the market the the, the premium on that on such share should be official but then these companies used to have unofficial premium new issues and then non adherence to the provisions of the companies act so whenever these companies were trading in the stock exchange they were not they were violating almost all the provisions which were there in the companies act and also there was a massive violation of the rules and regulations of the stock exchange and there was also delay in delivery of shares so investor who had purchased the shares had to wait for a very long time to get the shares in his name so these were all the rampant malpractices which were there in the bombay stock exchange as a result of which the sebi came into existence then the next the malpractices and unfair trade practices have eroded investor confidence and multiplied investor grievances so because of all these unfair trade practices the investor began losing confidence in the stock exchange and then he wanted to just see that somebody heard his grievance and this was done by the sebi so there were lot of investors who were cheated of their hard earned money and now the sebi is there to protect these investors then the government and the stock exchanges were rather helpless in redressing the investors problems because of lack of proper penal provisions in the existing legislation now even if he had got to go to the court or even if he had to appeal to the government about his about the cheating or the fraud or ex anything there were no regulations as such in the indian penal code to punish these cheaters as a result of which they if they wanted to have a separate board which would look into the affairs of the trading in stock exchanges as a result of which we have the securities exchange board of india which has clearly laid down the rules and regulations and it will come down strictly on those who are duping the investors now let us look into the purpose and role of sebi to the issuers it aims to provide a marketplace in which they can confidently look forward to raising finances they need in an easy fair and efficient manner now who are the issuers issuers are the companies who want to raise the capital so if you are a new company and you want to raise capital you can usually do it with the help of the sebi so it is a easy method or it is a platform wherein you can offer the shares for public issue and see that whatever capital you need for raising the finances we can raise with the help of this sebi then to the investors it should provide protection of their rights interest through adequate accurate and authentic information and disclosure of information on a 
continuous basis. Now, to the investors, it is providing them protection of their rights. So, investor rights are being protected and their interests and also are also protected through adequate, accurate and authentic information. So, whatever information is being provided through the SEBI, it is adequate, accurate and authentic information and disclosure of information on a continuous basis. So, every minute and every second the tra trading is done, the immediately the share prices will be reflected in the electronic screen through which the investors can see what is the price of their holdings. Then the next purpose or the role of SEBI to the intermediaries is it should offer a competitive, professionalized and expanding market with adequate and efficient infrastructure so that they are the able to render better services to the investors and the issuers. Now, who are the intermediaries? Now, the intermediaries are those persons who are acting between uh, the demand and the supply forces here. Now, the issuers are the companies who are in need of finance on one side and on the other side, we have the investors who are ready to invest in these companies. Now, this intermediaries work is to bring together both of them. Now, the company who is in need of capital will be funded by these investors who have money to invest. Now, this work of the intermediaries, now it will be regulated through SEBI. Now, how it will be regulated through SEBI? The intermediaries will give adequate, efficient infrastructure and they will be able to give better service to the investors as well as the issuers. So, we come to know that SEBI was established for the benefit of the issuers, for the benefit of the investors and also for the benefit of the intermediaries. Next, let us look into the various objectives of SEBI. What were the various objectives with which SEBI was established? To regulate the stock exchanges and securities industry and to promote their orderly functioning. Now, the first objective of establishing the SEBI was to regulate the stock exchanges and the security industry to promote the orderly functioning. To see that all the stock exchanges promote in the same manner as per the guidelines of SEBI. Now, the second objective of SEBI is to protect the rights and interests of the investors particularly individual investors and to guide and educate them. So, this was uh, done to see that there is a protection of the rights of the investors and also to guide them and to educate the investors. Now, the next objective of SEBI is to prevent trading malpractices and achieve a balance between self-regulation by the securities industry and its statutory regulation. So, to prevent trading malpractices. Now, in uh, the previous uh, slides, we know what are the various malpractices. There is rigging of uh, prices. There was also the, the self-style merchant bankers and there was also so many other things which were there, which were duping the investors. Now, the SEBI, with the help of SEBI, we could put an end to all the malpractices which were there in the trading platform and to achieve a balance between self-regulation and statutory regulation. To see that the securities industry are self-regulated and also through statutory regulation, through rules and regulations, it is able to bring about a balance in the security industry. And then to regulate and develop a code of conduct and fair practices by intermediaries like brokers, merchant bankers with a view to making them competitive and professional. Now, the next objective of SEBI is to regulate and develop a code of conduct for all the brokers. So, all those intermediaries who are involved in the trading, so for them, it has given them a code of conduct and also a professionalized approach to see that they cater to the needs of the investors and also to make them competitive and professional. Now, 
let us look into the functions of SEBI. The functions of SEBI are classified as the regulatory functions, development functions and the protective functions. Now, under the regulatory functions, we notice or we can say that the SEBI has made it mandatory for the registration of all the brokers, subbrokers and the players of the stock exchange. So, whoever has to be a broker, he should be registered under SEBI. Then, the second uh, regulatory function is, it has made it mandatory for all the uh, investment schemes, that is collective fund in investment schemes like mutual funds, they all have to be registered under SEBI and then any takeover bid by any companies, they have to be regulated by the provisions of SEBI. Then the next regulatory function is the SEBI has uh, called for a audit of all the stock exchanges throughout the nation. So it can go and inspect the working of any stock exchange in the country whenever it wants to do so and then all malpractices have been curbed in almost all the stock exchanges and the SEBI also has a right to levy a charges for any of its services which is giving to the stock exchange and it has also seen that there is a massive curb in all the malpractices and investors are feeling actually very, very protected. So, in this way, we can see that there are the various regulatory functions of SEBI. Now, the next, the developmental functions. Now, in the developmental functions, the first kind of function performed by SEBI is it is giving training to the intermediaries who are working in the stock exchange. Secondly, it is collecting all the market related data and the information and publishing this news from time to time for the benefit of all the people who want to invest in the stock exchange. And then it is also trying to develop the capital market through a flexible approach. Now, the third function of SEBI is the protective function. Now, under the protective function, the SEBI has been able to prohibit all the malpractices which were there in the stock exchanges like rigging of the market, then misleading information, etc. So, this has been prohibited by the uh, Securities Exchange Board of India. Then, the other protective function includes, so, imposing of penalties and also curbing insider trading in the stock exchanges. Now, what is this insider trading? So, in this insider trading, the directors of the company themselves, they purchase the shares of the uh, their own company and see that there is a shortage or scarcity of the shares of that company as a result of which the demand for such shares increase. Now, this sort of insider trading has been curbed by SEBI. Then, the last protective function by SEBI is it is undertaking steps for protection of the investors and it is also laid, laying down the rules of code and conduct for all the investors as well as the intermediaries who are working in the stock exchange. In this way, we can see that the SEBI has three important functions which are to be performed. The next, we will look into the organization and structure of SEBI. Now, each of the activities of SEBI demands more careful, closer coordination and intensive attention to, ena to enable it to attain its objectives. Now, uh, looking into the activities of SEBI, we are now able to understand how important a role it is playing in the trading of stocks and shares. So, it demands more careful, co closer, coordinative and intensive attention to enable its objectives. So, in order to attain its objectives, it has to be very, very sensitive to the activities going on in the stock exchange. So, SEBI has been restructured and rationalized in tune with its expanded scope. So, this SEBI has been restructured and rationalized. Now, let us look into the organization structure of SEBI. Now, each of activities of SEBI demands more careful, closer coordination and intensive attention 
to enable it to attain its objectives. So it has been restructured and rationalized in tune with its expanded scope. So we all know that SEBI has been able to protect the investor's interest as well as the interests of the issuers as well as the intermediaries. Now it has played its role as a regulatory body. Now in order to see that it serves the uh, society more, it has divided its uh, organization into five operational departments and each operational department has been headed by an executive director. In addition to this, SEBI has also opened its branches. In addition to Bombay, it has its branches in Chennai, Kolkata and Delhi. Now, SEBI has also formed two advisory committees. The other advisory committees are the primary market advisory committee and the secondary market advisory committee. Now, these advisory committees have been formed to advise SEBI on matters relating to the primary market and the secondary market. Now, let us look into what is, what is the kind of advice these advisory committees are giving. Now, to advise SEBI on matters relating to regulation of intermediaries for ensuring investors protection in the primary market. So, in the primary market, so whatever kind of protection the investors need, so these two committees will be advising the SEBI and to all, it, it is also advising SEBI on issues relating to development of the primary market. The first one is investor protection, second one is development of the primary market. Then third one is on disclosure requirements for companies. Now these two advisory committees also advise SEBI on disclosure requirements. So what kind of information the company has to disclose to the public and what it should not disclose. So it gives a list of all those things which the company has to disclose to its public before it goes for public issue. Then it also helps to advise for changes in legal framework to introduce simplification and transparency in the primary market. So what are the changes to be made? What are the changes through which we can have transparency, simplification of transactions in the primary market. So all the advice relating to this will be given by these two advisory committees and also it also advises the board relating to the development and regulation of the secondary market in the country. So it also advises the board on issues relating to the security market. So in this way, these two advisory committees have been advising the Securities Exchange Board of India and they are also helping in regulating the all the stock exchange activities and all the trading activities in all over India. These advisory committees are not statutory and the SEBI is not bound by the advice given by these statutory committees. However, these two committees have been formed uh, as a constant endeavor by the SEBI to collect as much information from the market as much as possible and to see that it helps the investors, intermediaries and also the issuers. Hope you have all understood this session on SEBI and its functions. Thank you.